Hey guys, it's Greg with Apple Explained, and in this video, we're going to cover how Apple has changed without its legendary co-founder Steve Jobs. As you may already know, Tim Cook was appointed CEO by Jobs himself before he resigned and passed away. And with Cook at the helm, Apple has changed in some aspects while staying pretty consistent in others. So let's go over what Apple looked like under Jobs and how it has looked under Cook since 2011. Now this video topic was the first place winner of last week's voting poll, and if you didn't get to vote, make sure you're subscribed. That way, the voting polls will show up right in your mobile activity feed, and you can let me know which video you'd like to see next. So I'm sure many of you know that Apple was co-founded by Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and Ronald Wayne. But it was Jobs who eventually served as the company's CEO and led the creation of Apple's biggest hit products, including the Macintosh, iPod, iPhone, and iPad. And if you know a little bit of Apple history, you'll remember Jobs was actually forced out of Apple back in 1985 when the board of directors deemed him unfit to occupy any major role at the company. And it was at that point when things started to take a turn for the worst. In the following 12 years, Apple would burn through three different CEOs, none of which had the leadership required to restore profitability to Apple. That is, until Steve Jobs returned to the company in 1997, at which point he refocused Apple's efforts into making a few great products rather than dozens of mediocre products. One of which was the infamous iMac in 1998, which single-handedly brought Apple back from the brink of bankruptcy and returned the company to profitability. Now, I tell that story because it helps people understand why many Apple fans believe the company is doomed without Jobs. They believe Steve Jobs' vision and leadership was the lifeblood of Apple, and it's easy to understand where they're coming from. Because looking back at Apple's history, there does appear to be a correlation between Jobs' presence at Apple and the company's level of success. And if you believe that to be true, Jobs' departure in 2011 should have been accompanied by the company's decline shortly after, similar to what happened when he was forced out back in 1985. But that hasn't been the case. And that's because Apple's success wasn't due to Jobs himself, but rather the philosophy Jobs ingrained into the company. When Jobs was forced out in 1985, then-CEO John Scully and Apple's board of directors had a completely different approach to managing the company than Jobs. They wanted Apple to expand its product line by introducing new models, but this only fragmented their computer lineup and confused customers. Also, Scully was no tech visionary. He essentially bet a portion of the company on the Newton PDA, a piece of technology that was rushed to market and suffered from disappointing sales. And these mistakes weren't made because Jobs was absent, but because Apple's leadership didn't understand the philosophy that made the company successful in the first place. And this actually makes sense when you consider Jobs had no choice in who ran Apple when he left in 1985, but he did have that choice in 2011. And he chose a replacement who had joined Apple during their rebuilding period and understood what kind of leadership it took to return the company to profitability. And that person, of course, was Tim Cook. He served as Apple's chief operating officer and was appointed CEO in 2011. So let's explore the ways Apple has changed since Jobs left. One area where Apple has changed their tone dramatically is when it comes to charity. Under Tim Cook, Apple began an employee match program, where the company would match donations made to any 501c3 organization up to $10,000 per person. And this applied to part-time workers in addition to full-time. The program had positive effects on not only how much Apple donated, but it motivated employees to begin giving if they never had before, or to give more, since Apple made their donations twice as valuable. And within the first year of the program, Apple had given over $1.3 million in matches alone. Now this may not seem like much when the company makes billions in revenue each quarter, but it is a huge improvement over the lack of any charitable initiatives under Jobs. And I should also mention that Cook personally has already donated millions of dollars to charity, but he took things a step further in 2015 when, in an interview, he said he planned on donating his entire $800 million fortune to charitable causes before his death. So it's clear Apple has become a much more generous company. 
but it goes further than donating to charity. Because after Jobs left the company, Apple began offering more generous employee discounts and hourly wages, with workers given an additional $500 discount on Macs and $250 discount on iPads, which was on top of the standard 25% discount already in place under Jobs. And these benefits may be a part of the reason why the turnover rate at Apple retail stores is one of the lowest in the industry, with employees staying on for an average of two years. The next area of change since Jobs' departure has to do with the environment. Now, Apple was already a very environmentally friendly company near the end of Jobs' tenure, with almost every Apple product receiving an EP Gold rating for being highly recyclable. But Cook took an even more aggressive approach, setting environmental goals for Apple that very few thought he could actually achieve. And this included the company being powered by 100% renewable energy, which they officially achieved globally in 2018. And Apple even helped nine of their suppliers operate on 100% renewable energy as well, something that's completely unprecedented in the tech industry. But Apple's environmental efforts didn't end here. They've also introduced two robots called Liam and Daisy that can dissemble iPhones to recover valuable materials inside and recycle the device more efficiently. And when it comes to the 2018 MacBook Air and Mac Mini, Apple announced they would be made from 100% recycled aluminum, a first for any Apple product. Also, keep in mind all of this has been achieved since 2011, which just goes to show how aggressive Apple has become in pushing the boundaries of environmental responsibility. So we can all agree that being more environmentally friendly is a positive move for Apple, but the next thing we discuss may not be so well received, because one of the most noticeable changes Apple has made to their products is their prices which have been ever increasing since about 2015. Now, I made a video covering this topic in more detail, and I'll leave a link to that in the description, but this trend of price hikes for virtually every single Apple product and even Apple accessories is worrying. I remember when Steve Jobs would introduce new models of iPhone, and its price would never increase. In fact, Jobs did everything he could to price Apple products as low as possible, and there's evidence to support this going as far back as the original Macintosh in 1984, when he said it needed to be priced at $1,500 or $2,000 at the most. But Scully ended up pricing it at $2,500, which put it out of reach of everyday consumers. And we may be seeing that type of approach creeping back into Apple today. Because when the iPad was first introduced, it was $500. But today, the most affordable flagship iPad starts at $800. And this is the case for the majority of Apple's product lines, including the iPhone, MacBook, Mac Mini, Apple Watch, and Apple TV. And these rising prices have meant record profits for Apple, who today has about $237 billion in cash on hand, compared to $76 billion when Jobs left in 2011. Now this technically is a good thing for Apple, but customers can only handle so much sticker shock before they're driven away from the brand. Now the last difference in Apple I want to point out is how often they engage with the media. Jobs was known for being a very private person who rarely gave interviews, and other Apple executives followed suit. But Cook has taken a different approach. He sat down for dozens of interviews since he was appointed CEO in 2011, and other prominent figures within the company have done the same, including Jonathan Ive, Eddie Q, and Craig Federighi. Cook even made appearances to capitalize on the bad press surrounding the way Facebook handled and sold user data. Now, whether this is a positive or negative thing for Apple remains to be seen, but I think if Cook continues to lead Apple in a moral and transparent way, they can use the media to communicate the advantages of being an Apple user, including not having your personal data stored and sold without your knowledge. So it's clear that Cook has been successful in maintaining effective leadership at Apple by ensuring the company's products remain seamless, easy to use, well designed, and also profitable, which is important in sustaining a company's existence because even Jobs himself said money is important to keep the ship afloat. Now, I've discussed different ways Apple has changed without Steve Jobs, but I want to point out many things that have remained the same. 
Apple still makes easy to use products with great designs. They continue to build the best retail stores in the industry. They continue to take user privacy seriously, and they still put the customer experience front and center of everything they do. And those are the qualities of Apple that Steve Jobs helped build and nurture throughout his life. So the question is not whether Tim Cook is a better or worse CEO than Steve Jobs, but rather is Apple still creating valuable products that make all of our lives easier? If so, Apple will continue to enjoy success in the tech industry and grow as a company. So that's how Apple has changed since Steve Jobs left. And if you want to vote for the next video topic, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.